Hey guys, I just wanted to make a quick video today about the Franklin binary trigger. Um, excuse my ghetto uh, tripod or whatever made out of soup cans. I don't have a bunch of money. I'm going to use a cell phone. So anyways, the Franklin BFS3 is your binary double tap trigger. It comes in at about $400. It's probably, you know, one of the better triggers, I think, um, just because... I think the Fostec Echo has a spring in it that I don't really necessarily like with that rear detachment system that has to ride on your uh, full full auto bolt carrier. But what I wanted to get into today was exactly a few modifications and some problems that I have encountered with my BFS3 that I have been able to fix. Now, um, this is probably going to void any warranty, whatever. I don't really care because um, at the end of the day, it's just a piece of metal. So. Here's a lower, and if you see, uh, it's been dremeled out, I've milled it, whatever. I've done my best to try to get it good. I don't have access to a drig, jig or a drill press at my apartment, so I'm just going to have to make do with what this is. Now, it functions with a semi-automatic uh, trigger, and it's totally fine. Um, but when you start getting into the BFS3, what I wanted to show you is a couple different things about this trigger. So here is the trigger housing, okay? And you've got your um, disconnector, and then you have your back. Uh, you have your independent um, disconnector switch. And basically, this thing goes in here like that. Okay. So now they all in there. They're happy. And the way this works is in semi-automatic mode. The sear on the back of the selector switch. This guy, right? There. Okay, so this guy in here, when you flip it up to semi-automatic mode, do you see that little tooth right there? That guy, oh, let's go back. This little tooth, right, right there. He is gonna touch the back of this disconnector, okay? Because this disconnector wants to be um, always wants to be back. Okay? So it's going to push down right here when you switch this forward. Okay, What that's going to do is it's going to cause this guy right here to slide forward and at some point this guy will drop. When that drops what you've done is you have this guy basically angling further forward, which allows for this guy to get caught when it comes back. So that way, when you're holding the trigger back, it doesn't just fly forward and fire again, because that would be very bad. So you could cause a round to explode out of battery or something like that. So whenever this guy, and that's when you, you, you pull, it fires, it doesn't keep firing, you kind of let go, you get the click, and then that's when this guy right here kind of reset off of it because you let go, and then you can pull it again, and when you go down, this will disengage from right here, okay, because that's how it rides, it goes like that, comes in, catches, okay, it's caught, you kind of let go, it clicks because it caught down here, and then you can pull the trigger again and it'll fire. So that's semi-automatic mode. Now in binary mode, this guy right here gets pushed down. There's spring tension here, so it slides back, okay? And what that's done is you've created a slightly higher elevated um, group right here. So this guy has now tilted back a little bit. So when you're pushing, when you're pulling the trigger, what happens is this will engage sooner than when you're in semi-automatic mode because this part back here, that part that got pressed, when you change it over to binary mode, there's just no tooth there, so this can actually go back. And then what happens is this can catch a little earlier on the hammer. This can catch a little earlier on the hammer, and then you can start releasing um, you can start releasing and what happens is you'll release and it'll actually let go on the release and not catch that right there because you've enhanced the angle 
uh, down more. Okay, so semi-automatic mode, binary mode, semi-automatic mode is like just tilted, and then binary mode adds like 10 extra degrees. That allows this to clear the shelf sooner when you're letting go, and this is still cleared. So what I've actually run into is when this was installed in my lower, uh, it would it would function totally fine in, in semi-automatic mode, but in binary mode, it would continue to fire as if it was a semi-automatic weapon. And this was caused because this hammer would come back, he'd come back, he'd come back, he'd come back, he'd come back, and he's going to meet my sear right there. And when it would meet, it would push, and it would just keep pushing. And then eventually the hammer here, right there, would hit the back of this left IDS disconnector, which would cause it to slide forward. And when it slides forward, we know that the whole mechanism drops down lower and returns everything to semi-automatic mode. So at first I thought, okay, well, what can I do? So I took everything apart and I polished everything. So this is something that you guys can do here at your house too. So I took this guy, I just polished this side where the IDS runs. I left this side alone because I just, it, it only goes up and down. So I don't really care uh, if it's polished like that, but I wanted to polish this side. So basically what I did is I took a, uh, a 1000, 4000 um, grit, whetstone and just whetstoned it and then I polished it with a Dremel uh, made it all shiny and it feels smoother it's nice I'm gonna keep it oiled it's whatever um, and then I did both sides of this one now you can see a little bit of black marking here and I'll talk about that later what we're gonna do with that but I shine this up and I shine this side up okay and I put it all back together and it still didn't function and one of the things I was also running into is this guy right here was not wanting to slide back. It had no spring pressure. So they give you this stupid little spring, okay? Let me show you this. They give you this spring here, okay? And it barely protrudes. So um, it's like it doesn't have enough pressure. So what I did is I actually cut a piece of a magazine spring and I put it into the back of that little uh, area to bring the to bring the spring forward a little bit more and that little bit of extra tension just totally made this thing actually function the way it was supposed to and this is a totally normal it's not damaged regular spring because I have a pack of five so you can see when it's fully seated in here I mean it barely sticks out into that that little hole to the left it's, it's kind of ridiculous so I added a little bit of spacer which causes it to stick out just a little bit more and we get extra pressure. So what we're gonna do is um, to fix the problem, when that hammer comes back, that hammer kept trying to touch right here, okay? Now, you can shave the back of the hammer here. That's fine, why not? I don't see a problem with shaving that because if this never contacts there, it can't pull it forward and, and push it forward. And this guy doesn't have anything to do with pressing right here. This doesn't matter. So who cares? It doesn't need to. It doesn't need to rest on that. So you can shave that. And this is really hard material. Um, I, I guess it wouldn't really matter. You could go that way. Uh, they give you another hammer anyway, so you could do it. And I tried. I tried sitting there and, and, and using a grinder on this for a minute. But uh, it's kind of laboring, labor intensive, and this metal is really hard. So um, the other solution I came up with is what we're going to do is if you see this, right here. And what I'm going to do is when these are lined up, and this is resting as if it was in binary mode, so it's resting like if it was binary, I'm going to shave off that, that shiny bit of metal here on the left. And that's why I used a black marker. Uh, I have to reapply it, but I'm going to shave that off. And what this is going to do is it's going to cause the hammer to not fuck with that anymore. And now it'll fire in binary because... When you're in semi-automatic mode, nothing's pushing on that. This doesn't matter. This is just an unnecessary amount of metal. The, the semi-automatic mode pushes right here, and it's just going to fly forward. And once that goes on, it's back to semi-auto, nothing's happening. And in the binary mode, when you're in binary, it's real sensitive. And if that hammer comes down, 
and it touches that, I mean, it just clicks it right back over to semi-automatic mode. And so now you're stuck when it goes like that and it pushes down and it grabs that and you're like, okay, well, I'm not fully like, it's not really in there because this thing goes all the way in. It pushes that forward and now everything's caught and, I'm go, and I go back to semi-automatic mode and everything gets screwed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shave that down and then that will cause this weapon to function correctly. So I'm gonna end the video here. I'm sorry it took 10 minutes of your time. Uh, this is part one. I will come back with part two and we'll just put everything together and we'll give it a functions check. So I hope I explained kinda how you can fix this. Again, the two options are shave this guy right here if you want and just keep shaving it. Cause again, this doesn't do anything on the weapon. I mean, you, you look at this, it comes in, it gets hit and it bends down. It's fine. Like you don't need to worry about that. And then this you can shave down here. Cause again, it doesn't interact with anything at all. And I, I see no reason why it needs to be uh, a part of the mechanism here. Cause again, when you look at it this way, we're all in binary mode. It's eclipsing. There's no reason for that. So I'm just going to shave that down and this can go forward and back and forward and back all day long and it won't interfere. And this metal's softer and easier to get through. This anodized or whatever military steel, I mean, you could probably figure out how to do it if you wanted to. And then, you know, you mess up a hammer because <clears throat> I don't think you can just buy these anymore. But I'm not afraid to do this. This is for this gun and if anything, I'm reducing the weight from the uh, from here. So whatever. All right, guys. Thanks.